You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming, so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Bjorn's Path. So the last place we left off, we just met up with a couple people back up in the cafeteria again, and Coach just made the announcement that well, the trip to town is delayed, so we gotta find something to fill that time with. We gotta find something to kill it, we gotta find something to do! I can think of a couple, I can think of a few things. But anyway, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's jump right in. Alarm saying you're up. All right, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Morning, Devin. Is everything okay? Yes, thank you. I had hoped to have less eventful morning, but everything's fine. So, we're stuck in the guest house? Unfortunately. Only until the afternoon. The snowplow should get here by then. Morning, all. Did I miss something? Morning, Lake. <laughs> Quite a lot, actually. The sleepyhead is finally here. Do I need to remind you that you were late for lunch yesterday? Besides, breakfast isn't even here yet. As if on cue, the guest house staff enters with a cart for their food. And yes, they have croissants. Each table gets a basket with various kinds of bread, an assortment of jams and pastes, a pitcher of milk, and a bag of corn cereals. There's also a separate dish of sweet pastries and one with brunost, as well as regular coconut cheese and a bowl of fruits. Looks like they don't serve fish in this guest house. Not that I mind, I haven't had any in a long time. I'm not a fan of very sweet breakfast, so I skip the cereal and just make myself a few sandwiches and grab a croissant. Bjorn starts with two croissants, unsurprisingly. He cuts them open and spreads marmalade on one side and then puts some fresh fruit inside and folds them back together. Sounds delicious. You like your breakfast sweet? Hell, I do too. I just had, I had cheesecake this morning. <laughs> yeah, it puts me in a good mood. Or at least makes it better. Fair. I often go for a mix of savory and sweet. Too much sugar makes me feel sick. Wait, are you in a bad mood now? Honestly, it's hard to tell. He doesn't look sad, but he's been rather quiet for the last few minutes. I don't know him well enough to know what he might be thinking or feeling. I hope we go to the town today, but that's just a mild disappointment. On a positive note, you can probably find some time for a nap later if you're still sleepy. Yeah, at least that. Six o'clock is not exactly the hour I like waking up at. Into that. Quite the contrary. I think making people wake up before at least eight should be considered a war crime. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not a fan either. We'll find something to do here for sure, and we're still visiting the town tomorrow. Hmm. <clears throat> I guess. I guess. Thank you, Garvin. The difference between a brooding Bjorn and a cheerful one is pretty stark. He seems much livelier and more present now. I'm happy to know that. I'm happy to know this actually managed to cheer him up. Jorgen, you're not eating anything? A coffee for me is enough. I'll grab an apple or two later. Hey! Those reviver horn are really tasty. I'll take your word for it. I'll stay away from anything that has rhubarb in it. I wonder if cereal with coffee would taste okay. Yes, it does. Lay. <clears throat> Lake. What? Don't. As I'm listening to all the conversations happening around me, a warm feeling arises in my chest. It's been only a day since we arrived, but we already look and act like a group of friends. Even if we all study in different departments, just for the duration of the camp, we can keep together. And it makes me happy. <laughs> I hear girl, I hear women's voices, but I see no women. Carvin? I stop eating my rhubarb horn mid-bite and look at Miko. Hmm? Did you take any more photos yesterday? No, not really. I mostly shoot on my digital camera, but I left it in my room and I only had the instant one with me. Uh oh, you have an instant camera? Wait, I didn't tell you? I've had it with me the whole time. I even have it with me right now. Really? You mentioned you're into analog photography, but I thought you were talking about shooting on regular film. I got an instant camera as an addition to my usual digital one, and so far I'm liking it a lot. I always wanted to have one, they're so cool. They are, but the cost of film is killing me. Yeah, I bet. Still, I love instant photos ever since I held one in my paw. Once I got an album by a local band at the Indie, li at the indie Records label fair. I once got an album by a local band at the Indie Record Labels fair. When I got back home and opened the packaging, it turned out that there was an instant photo from the recording session inside. Such a nice touch. Instant photos look like small glossy paintings. 
or windows to alternate realities frozen in time. Yeah, I know what he means. I put the camera bag on the table and took to take the camera out, wanting to pass it on to Bjorn. But then I noticed something colorful at the bottom of the bag, so I lean in. Uh, guys? I think I found it. Inside the bag is the key to my room. I take it out and inspect the tag, just to be sure. And surely, the number 17 is written down on the wooden tag. Oh! That's great! Oh, you have your key? That's good. You won't have to wait till, till the afternoon for the spare key to arrive. Why would I put the key there, though? I must have been really out of it yesterday morning. But what's important is that I have it back. Although, I have to admit, I enjoyed sharing a room quite a lot. Maybe I'll think of something later. Oh, and by the way, I need to bring you back to- I need to bring you back your jacket. There's no hurry. Besides, I need to stay here after breakfast and set up everything. I'm all done with breakfast, so I'll grab my bag and stand up. See you at the lectures! See ya! Later, Carvin! See ya, Carvin! Though, I bet we won't attend a lot of them together. Right, you're mostly going to the ones about physics. Well, we can always meet afterwards. Sure, that'd be nice. Thankfully, I don't have to hurry. There's still a lot of time before the lectures will start, and but it'll be nice to finally sit in my own room after for a while. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so good. Oh, that's such a good animation. Ah, oh, Bjorn is such a cutie. Opening the door to my room after not being able to get in the whole day feels really satisfying. Ah, finally here again. Back in my own room. I look around at absorbing every small detail, from the out from the order of the colors on the carpet to the shape of the ceiling beams and lamps. The air here smells of wood and clean laundry. Everything is just as I left it. Most of my stuff is already unpacked, stashed away in the wardrobe and cupboards, so the rooms look neat and inviting. The room looks neat and inviting. After putting down the camera bag on the table, I walk straight towards the bed and let myself fall onto it, surrendering myself to the soft mattress's embrace. The spring creaks under me in, prote in protest, like a choir of disgruntled gnomes. What the fuck? It feels good to be alone for a moment, and having a huge bed just for myself is pretty, is pretty great, too. But... I lie like this for a while, enjoying the silence. It's a bit weird to be all alone all of a sudden, though. Bjorn's company felt so unobtrusive that it didn't tire me at all. I kind of miss it. I wonder how he's, what he's doing now. Maybe watching something? Or unpacking the backpack he prepared for the trip to town. That must feel at least somewhat disheartening. I should prepare myself mentally for the lectures. It's going to be more than five hours of heavy learning. I take off my clothes and fold them. Then I hop into the bathroom and generously apply deodorant on my torso and armpits. Afterwards, I take out a fresh pair of boxers and socks, both with a different pattern, just as I like them, and put them on. Oh yes, I feel much better in fresh clothes. I doubt anyone would notice, but somehow it makes a difference for me. Wearing the same shirt two days in a row feels wrong, even if it smells fine. I'm glad tigers don't sweat much. I don't have to be too mindful of my smell, unlike animals of some other species. I have some time to kill now before the lectures. Maybe I'll just read a book, or I could go around and take some photos now that I have my digital camera back. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've been here for a day already, and I barely have any photos. The scenery is still the scenery is stunning, and the guest house itself is no worse. Maybe I won't get an easy great, maybe I won't get any great landscape shots in this weather, but I have a few other ideas. I take the instant camera out of the bag and swap it for a digital one. A mirrorless I got from the, my parents for my 18th birthday, and has been my favorite tool ever since. Wearing my own jacket with a camera bag on my shoulder, I leave the room to hunt for some shots. Shots, 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 shots. <laughs> I stand up and stretch out, groaning lightly. The chairs here definitely weren't designed with watching an hour-long lecture in mind. They don't look like it either. Ugh! That was good, wasn't it? Although, maybe a bit too informative and technical for a morning lecture. Yeah, I think I understood all of it, but it took some serious effort. At least the previous one was a bit lighter. The next one is about gravitational lensing, whatever that is. I think, uh, I think I'll think i skip it. Astrophysics doesn't interest me that much. While students are slowly leaving the room for a break, I notice a familiar lion snoring in his chair. His hair is covering his eyes with a messy white curtain, and his snout is half open. Hey, Lake? He doesn't react before I wave in front of his face. Ah? Uh? Is it over? Yeah, the lecture ended a while ago. Lake rubs his eyes sleepily for a moment, then stands up and looks around. Oh, finally. Wait, aren't you studying astrophysics? What were you doing here? Well, I didn't look very closely at the timetable. 
I saw a lecture on astrocytes, you know, astrocytes. So I thought it must be something astrophysical and I had never heard of before. I had no idea it would be about some brain stuff. So you didn't bother reading the description? Who does that anyway, right? Lake? Oh my god, Lake! Well, nothing is lost. I had a good nap at least. Thanks for uh, waking me up. I'll be going to my room now, so see you later. See ya. Have fun. We have a 40 minute long break now, right? Yeah, although I think I'll skip the next lecture. I should be there. Gravitational lensing is interesting, but complicated as hell. If this lecture won't help me understand it, I don't know what will. I think I'll go back to my room for two for now. Sure, see you in a while. See ya. See ya. The room is mostly empty now, but some of the students stayed behind, ta talking in small circles and groups. What should I do? Stay in the, uh, okay, uh, let's... Oh, uh, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Let's go for a walk with Miko. I wonder what Miko is doing. I doubt he was here for the lecture. I don't think neurology interests him. But looking to the far end of the room, that's just who I see. Miko, hey there. Oh, Carvin, hello. What are you doing here? I was sure you'd skip this lecture. Your course doesn't have much to do with neurology. I thought I'd try to attend all the lectures today. Not every day I have a chance to learn something interesting from beyond our curriculum. Hmm, fair. I don't think I have the willpower to sit through the whole day of lectures voluntarily. Not when there are fun other fun things to do. <laughs> Good thing we have a break now, then. We can do something fun together. Actually, I already had something planned for this break, but maybe you would like to accompany me? Sure! Great! We leave the room alongside other students, making our way to the corridor. So, did you learn something from the last lecture? Well, not really. <laughs> School days, fool days. The lecture did a good job of explaining everything, but there was so much I didn't know I doubt I'll remember much of it. Not to say I regret being there. Uh, by the way, where are we going? Outside, but first to my room. I need to get a few things. Or you could grab your camera in the meantime if you want. Now that I have my digital camera back, it would be nice to walk around and take some photos of the surroundings. I couldn't go too crazy with the instant camera, especially as I took only one film pack with eight photos with me. Eight photos? Wow! That's not much at all. I'll go get it. How about we meet at the entrance? Sounds good. This music is so good. Miko enters his room and I, dire and I direct my steps to my own. I wonder what he's up to. That sounded a bit mysterious. Hmm. What? Oh, yeah, pretty, pretty. I've been waiting for the wolf for some time now, but there still aren't. No, but there, there are still no signs of him. Opening the camera bag, I once again go through the lenses I took with me. 50 millimeter f 1.8 medium focal length, a very bright one, perfect for portraits, but that's not its only use. 30 millimeter f 0.28, a wider angle, but still rather bright. I'm not a fan of zoom lenses. They're almost always worse than a fixed local length prime lenses, so I don't take any this time. I was surprised how stark the difference was when I first compared them. What are you doing? Looking up, oh, excuse me, looking up, I see Miko sporting a rather full-looking backpack. Just looking through my lenses, thinking if I should swap any for something else. But no, I'm happy with what I have here. And what do you have in there? And I'm sorry, let me do that again. And what do you have in there? You'll see in a short while. <laughs> Miko, what are you planning, you devilish wolf? I leave the guest house after Miko, stepping out into the snow. The view of the valley opens up before us, still as breathtaking as the first time. It's a fine afternoon, with only the lightest snow still falling. I take a lungful of arctic air. It's sobering and delicious, carrying the smells of pine needles and glaciers. Follow me. We'll find a good spot. Oh, if you want to take some pictures along the way, just tell me and I'll wait. We're not in a hurry. Sure, it usually doesn't take much time, though. I have to stop for just a moment. Catching up with you won't be a problem. Miko turns around and continues down the path leading to the forest. I follow close behind, looking around for a frame that would catch my interest. And either this place is full of great frames, or I'm so excited and happy that everything looks interesting to me. <laughs> we make our way into the forest, where the trees muffle the whispering wind. The silence here feels like a woolly blanket, almost too heavy to shake off. Miko, what is it we're looking for? A fallen tree or a stump somewhere quiet. We should find some in no time. Right. That shouldn't be too hard to find in a forest. 
And surely, after a few more minutes of walking, I noticed a fallen tree lying horizontally on the ground, just a few meters away from the path. How about that one? You have a good eye, Carvin. We diverge from the path and head towards the spot I scouted, our paws leaving deep prints in the snow. Perfect! Uh, perfect for what? Let me show you. Miko takes off his backpack and rests it against the fallen tree. He reaches into the bag and takes out a small white box with colorful knobs and buttons. Some kind of an instrument? This is something I got not long before the camp. It's a sampler and sequencer in one box. It's fully portable, so I can take it with me anywhere. Oh, I think I saw this online a few times. Videos of people jamming with these are popular. It's fun to use and fun to watch. I like going out and playing in nature. It never fails to calm me down and puts me in a good mood. Staying here up north, far from any towns and people, I started feeling more at peace with the world around me. It's quieter in my head, and my thoughts are clearer, too. Almost as if a veil was lifted from them. The quietness here speaks to me clearer than the city's noise. Veil lifting, the wind speaks to me the tales of the days past. Almost like day, almost like back at home. It doesn't really remind me of that. It's a different kind of quietness. This one feels like an infinite stillness. I want to try capturing it somehow. Like how you capture the image with your camera. I want to describe this place with music. The sampler has a built-in microphone. I wanted to record the ambient sounds from here and try to make something out of them. Photography and music are very different media, but their aims aren't always far off. They both can weave stories, describe scenes and places, capture emotions. In essence, they both capture or construct worlds. I also wanted to record my own voice humming along with the wind, but since you're here with me, can I record you instead? Sure thing, but you have to tell me exactly what to do. Sure, nothing too hard. I'll record the general ambience first, and then maybe try finding some specific sounds I could use. You can go take photos in the meantime, or stay here with me and talk. I'll stick around. This spot is quite atmospheric. Great! I'll get started then. Miko sits down on the fallen tree, rests the instrument on an instrument on his knees, and plugs in a small pair of headphones. While the wolf is busy, I walk around, just taking in the atmosphere of this place. I try to muffle my steps, but it's hard to do when the snow is crunching under my paws. When examined up close, everything seems interesting. The lichens growing on the trees, the rhythm of the snow falling, the ever-changing tapestry of the clouds above us. Sometimes nature is more beautiful than any animal-created artwork. I take a few pictures before my paws get cold. I put the camera back and stick them in the pockets of my coat. After a minute or less, I walk over to Miko and sit down beside him. How's it going? Good. I recorded some backgrounds and found a pad of sound that I like that, I like that goes along well. If it all goes well, I might even finish it today. How about you? I hope you're not getting bored. I'd feel bad if you took off. I took you all the way out here just so you walk around bored. No, you know I don't mind just hanging around. Besides, it's my first walk around here with my digital camera. I'm the opposite of bored. This whole camp feels exciting, you know, for many reasons, and the fact that we can sit together, sit together again like this is one of them. By the way, I remember you having just a bit of equipment. How did you get this much? I mean, it must all be expensive as hell. Hmm. Have you maybe heard of the Manifold Curiosity? I don't recall the name. What's that? It's a game I made the soundtrack for. It was created by a small studio in Helsing and released earlier this year. Maybe it wasn't a great hit, but it was a good game. You should check it out if you don't know it. They helped me with getting the instruments, and the pay was good enough so that I could buy some more that I want some more that I wanted. And it's not like it's sunk in money. I I bought most of them most of these used so I can resell them later at the same price or just a tad cheaper. Wow, I had no idea. I'm sure it's great. Now I definitely have to play the game. Or at least find the soundtrack somewhere. I thought you didn't want to put your stuff out there. Isn't that what you said told Torolf? Yeah, but this was a bit different. I composed it for the entire game, so it was a commission work. Something not fully mine. Not to say I didn't put effort into it, quite the contrary. I tried giving them a soundtrack that would complement the game the best, because that's what soundtracks are for. And I think they liked it, because it made its way into the game for the first release. For the release. I see. Leaning back on the tree trunk, I open my maw and catch a few falling snowflakes, melting on my tongue. Suddenly, I feel the wolf's weight resting on my shoulder as he leans on me, continuing to fiddle with the synth on his lap. Move a bit away from him. It's not your time now. Before I realize what I'm doing, I move a bit to the side, away from the wolf, breaking the contact between us. He doesn't seem to notice, even though I'm sure he did. Instead, he looks completely focused on the music, engrossed in his own world. The cold wind blows relentlessly, and I start to get a bit cold. I hope Miko hurries up. I want to freeze to death out here. Ah, it's jamming Miko. Love it. Such good animations. 
Ah, oh, man, I love Dawn Chorus. Ugh, it's finally over. Oh, man, that was a lot. Yeah, I wanted to attend the next lecture, too, but I'm having second thoughts about that. I don't think I have the mental capacity for that anymore today. What's it about? Language patterns recognition in dolphins. Hmm, doesn't ring a bell, sorry. How did you like this one, by the way? The lecture did a good job of explaining everything, but my knowledge of astrophysics is pretty much, well, non-existent. It was interesting, though. I'm glad you talked me into it. To be completely frank with you, I just wanted some company here. I didn't care about the lecture itself that much. But I enjoyed it, too. It was more interesting than I thought it'd be. You could go somewhere and relax. Some rest would be nice. Oh, damn, my back! And I'm gonna pause it right there. Ha <laughs> ha as a little tiny, tiny little bit of a cliffhanger for you guys. Hey, it sets up the next episode perfectly. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.